Our first New Year's Six Bowl game is the All Orange Bowl as number six, Tennessee, takes on number seven, Clemson. This is going to be a really fun and interesting game. You know, you take a look at Tennessee. It's a team that's one of the biggest surprises in college football this year. We thought and knew that Tennessee would be good. I don't know if anybody thought they'd be this good. Six in the country and really one game away from the college football playoff. Volunteers losing to South Carolina in blowout fashion in Columbia and in the process losing their Heisman hopeful quarterback in Hendon Hooker. Clemson, on the other hand, had a bit of a bounce back year. They won 10 games last year, missed out on the college football playoff, missed out on it again this year because they, like Tennessee, fell to South Carolina in their season finale. The Tigers still won the ACC. They're still 11-2 and on the year, but uh, in Orange Bowl, better than a, you know, a Cheez-It Bowl they had last year, but obviously not exactly where Dallas winning the Tigers want to be. But still going to be an interesting, interesting game. Still a great opportunity for both these teams to get a quality bowl victory over a quality opponent and carry some momentum into 2023. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today as we break down everything you need to know and, of course, predict the winner for this matchup between the Volunteers and the Tigers. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. We have some great picks over there, guys. Currently, as of this filming, 15-2 and two against the spread on bowl picks, guys. One of the best marks in the country. $29.99 for our holiday special gets you every single, every single college football bowl game pick and every single NFL playoff pick, too, all combined into one package. All college, or all football postseason games in one package and guaranteed winners. So go check it out. Link down in the description below. We promise you will not regret it. And we promise you will walk away a winner. So let's take a look at this game. We'll start with Tennessee. We'll, we'll start with Tennessee here, offensively looking like a skeleton crew. And it's really unfortunate. Tennessee has one, one of the best offenses in the country this year. And it's a shame we're not going to see them at full strength in a big, big uh, a bowl game for them. Maybe the best bowl game and best appearance for them since, what, 1998? No Hendon Hooker, of course. He got hurt uh, in, that, in that loss to South Carolina. No offensive coordinator in Alice Gillespie, who took the head coaching job at USF. No Cedric Tillman. No Jalen Hyatt, who had over 1,200 reception yards and 15 touchdowns on the year. So they are losing their you know, star quarterback who didn't play in the season finale against Vanderbilt. We will say that, but they don't have their star quarterback. They don't have two of their top wide receivers. They don't have their coordinator. You can't help but wonder what's going to happen for a Tennessee offense that was averaging over 47 points per game and over 530 yards per game. Will they be motivated? Will they be ready? And how will they play with Joe Milton leading the way? 720 yards, seven touchdowns, zero interceptions on the year, but obviously playing very sparingly behind Hendon Hooker. And his start against Vanderbilt in the season finale, a shutout victory, for Tennessee. He went 11 for 21 for 147 yards and a touchdown. Nothing special. Not bad. Not great. Good enough to get a win. Going to need a little bit more than that to take down Clemson. But you look a little bit deeper. They do have Jalen Wright. They have Jalen Wright, 786 yards, 10 touchdowns on the ground at running back. They have Jabari Small as well, 696 yards, 12 touchdowns. They lead a ground game, guys. It's averaging over 205 rushing yards per game. And so that could be something that takes a little bit of the weight off of Joe Milton's shoulder, uh, you know, allows uh, Tennessee to try to ground and pound in this game and then maybe air it out when they need to. Kind of allow Tennessee to ease into this game with the ground game, let Joe Milton get his feet wet, feel comfortable. Then you can start airing out to the receivers that are left. Take a look at Clemson. This is an exciting time to be a Clemson fan. Obviously, you want to win this game against Tennessee. You want to carry that momentum in the next season. But this is an opportunity to finally get a full look at Cade Clubnate. This is the opportunity to see him. You know, DJ Uyungle transferring out. Cade Klubnik is in. Clemson fans have been wanting to see this for a while. And they kind of got a little bit of a taste in that ACC championship game where uh, he, he went 20 for 24 for 279 yards and a touchdown in that blowout victory over North Carolina. Had a really good performance in that game against the Tar Heels. Can he carry that on and keep that up against Tennessee now in the Orange Bowl? They are going to have Will Shipley at their disposal, over 1,100 yards on the ground and 15 touchdowns, so a great running back to help out with Kate Clubman. So kind of like Joe Milton here, two quarterbacks that we haven't seen much of this season, the run game could be what kind of you know eases both quarterbacks into this game, possibly, uh, and, and kind of allows the offense to get things going and maybe we'll set up the pass as the game goes on. So Shipley is there. He's kind of been the workhorse for Clemson as they're averaging 179 rushing yards per game. I do think we're going to see more passing attempts 
and more of a passing attack from Clemson. They've only averaged 225 passing yards per game this year. I think you're going to see a little bit more for Club Nick. I think they're going to open things up with him. He's going to be the starter next year, so why not open up the playbook and let him go at it in a big-time bowl game, big-time setting against a high quality opponent and let's keep in mind while everybody wants to dog on Clemson in their offense they have scored 30 points or more in each of the last four games they can put up points they were doing that with DJ Uyunglele I expect them to be able to do the same with Kate Klubnik I especially think they're gonna be able to do it against a Tennessee defense that hasn't been all that great against the pass Tennessee giving up 23 and a half points per game not a horrible mark but not great 287 passing yards per game that's what they're giving up they're very vulnerable in the secondary I mean 453 yards to South Carolina through the air, 257 to Georgia, 455 to Alabama, 300 to LSU, 453 to Florida, 274 to Pittsburgh. The, the secondary really hasn't been all that great for Tennessee this season. And now they're facing a quarterback in K. Clubney that is young, that hasn't had much in-game experience, but what we've seen has been very, very good and very efficient. So that's an interesting storyline to see here. An experienced quarterback in Klubnik facing a very weak secondary, giving up nearly 300 passing yards per game. What's going to give there? Who's going to win that battle? Tennessee has to be able to shut down the pass because the run game hasn't had much success against the Volunteers. Tennessee's only given about 112 rushing yards per game, so I don't think Will Shipley's going to have a great day against Tennessee. I don't expect tons of yards from him. It's Klubnik versus the secondary. Who's going to win it? Take a look at Clemson and their defense. I would say it's probably been the strength of their team this year uh, defensively, uh, but they're going to be without some key players. They're going to be without Trenton Simpson, number two tackler on the team, 73 tackles, two and a half sacks. They're going to be without Miles Murphy, 40 tackles, six and a half sacks on the year. So you're losing a couple big time uh, losses in the linebacking core, which could be concerning with Tennessee and that rushing attack that we mentioned. Getting to that second level, not going to have your big time starters there. Could Jalen Wright, Jabari Small have a big day on the ground to kind of help out Joe Milton in that area? Keep in mind, Milton can run a little bit as well. Clemson giving up those 20 points per game, 230 through the air, only 101 on the ground. So while they do lose two key linebackers, the rushing defense has been really, really stout. Not many teams can, can run against Clemson. Uh, and I'll be interested to see if Tennessee is able to do that against a very strong, still strong Clemson in front seven. You look at the game, guys. I mean, Joe Milton's going to have to, to me, ultimately win the game through the air. I think he ultimately will. I, the question is, can he do it? Can he do it against a Clemson defensive line that has 40 sacks on the year? 40 sacks and 13 interceptions. Can they do that? Can they do it against a Clemson defense that forced three turnovers against North Carolina, two turnovers against uh, South Carolina, two against Miami, two against Louisville? So a defense that has now forced 11 turnovers in their last four games. Can they do that? Uh, this Clemson defense, guys, isn't something that we've seen in years past. It's not a Brent Venables-led defense. It's not as strong as it's been in years past, but it's still pretty dang stout. And again, they're facing a Tennessee offense that right now feels like a skeleton crew without two of their top receivers, without their offensive coordinator, and of course, without Hinton Hooker, who clearly would be the big X factor in this game. So what's going to happen in the Orange Bowl, guys? The all-Orange Bowl. You know, you've got Tennessee wearing their orange. You've got Clemson, who's obviously an orange team. Uh, unfortunately, can't do color rush. Can't have both in this one. Let's Clemson wore their purple, but that's probably not going to happen. Story for another time. But this is a fun game. Top 10 matchup. First New Year's Six Bowl game of the year. Uh, it's going to be a very, very fun one down in Miami. Uh, but ultimately, I have to go with Clemson here. Uh, I've got to go with Clemson. Tennessee's strength this season clearly has been their offense, and they are losing a lot of key playmakers on that side of the ball. They're facing a pretty stingy Clemson defense that is strong against the run, so I don't expect huge days from Jalen Wright or Jabari Small. And now the Clemson uh, defense is facing Joe Milton, who's solid at quarterback, but he's no Hendon Hooker. K. Klubnik, from what I've seen, has been phenomenal. He's facing a poor Tennessee secondary. I think Clemson's able to explo uh, use that, exploit that, and give K. Klubnik a lot of experience and a lot of confidence heading into next year where he's going to be the full-time starter in Death Valley as he tries to get them back to the college football playoff. So give me Clemson to beat Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. Give me a big full de debut for Cade Klubnik. Clemson will finish the year with 12 wins and a possible top five finish. Sure, it's no playoff. Sure, it's no national championship. But there's still a lot to be excited about if you are a Tigers fan, especially as you prepare for 2023. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Great Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Again, we have some of the best picks in the country over there in our holiday special. It's just $29.99 and get you all postseason picks for just college and NFL. So combining the two into one package, go check it out. The link down in the description below. 
And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah.